And the question I, I asked was why polio eradication and why was there so much discontent about polio eradication, of which there is. And what I discovered was that polio was not a disease that was being eradicated because of a massive demand by the countries that suffered from polio. It wasn't a disease that was being eradicated because polio experts wanted it to be eradicated. It rather was a disease that a small number of people in the early 1980s who were committed to the concept of eradication as a major public health tool. Smallpox had been eradicated. They wanted to eradicate other diseases. But the World Health Organization and most of the world health community said no more of these uh, vertical, come in, eradicate, and leave programs. We want primary health care. We want to build routine immunization systems. We want to build systems that will last forever and that will produce um, and deliver uh, health goods to children um, into the future indefinitely. But there were these people who were committed to eradication who said, we need a disease to eradicate. We have to get a model. We've got to prove it's doable a second time. Any disease that's eradicatable will work. And the one that apparently they could get immediately to do something about was polio. It was a minor disease. It had a low fatality at a time that children were dying in the millions from other diseases, but not from polio. They emphasized polio. The um, opportunity course, that is what you don't do because you're doing something else, were very high. They didn't, con they didn't consider any opportunity course. They said this is going to be a very cheap campaign, $100 million. It's going to be done very fast by the year 2000, starting in uh, 1988, and that the benefits would be infinite. They would go on forever because you wouldn't have to give the, the polio vaccine anymore. Instead, what they discovered was that the costs overrun are now seven or eight billion dollars. They have not yet accomplished eradication of polio. Um, the benefits will not be infinite because the vaccine that they use, the Sabin oral polio vaccine, had the problem that it could mutate into virulent strain that indeed could cause epidemics on its own. And because of the danger that there might be some of that lurking out there, they're going to have to use another more expensive vaccine, the salt uh, inactivated killed vaccine, perhaps for the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, indefinitely. And so the actual cost of the developing world is going to be greater than if they had done um, and not tried for eradication, but tried for regular routine immunization. And um, so that's what the book explores and explores how a small group of men who were committed to eradication were able to basically hijack the world's public health agenda and, and focus upon this particular disease. Now, People thought they were buying, reluctantly perhaps, into polio eradication. But what they really were buying into was eradication as a concept. They didn't even know what their agenda was. Only these small groups of people did. At the beginning, almost no one was for eradication. But over time, despite all the failures and cost overruns and delays of polio eradication, the propaganda machine has convinced people that eradication is the way to go. The Bill Gates Foundation has been convinced eradication is the way to go. And the result is that there are now people planning future eradication programs. They want to build upon the polio infrastructure, which normally would simply disappear after while polio is eradicated. We can't let that happen. We have to use it. So why don't we go for measles? Maybe we'll go for mumps. Maybe we'll go for rubella also. We'll do multiple eradication campaigns. And yet the reality is that the lessons of the polio campaign were there's so much we don't understand of the biology, of the facts on the ground in the world, unintended consequences, the science is not perfected. And here, instead of saying, my God, let's be very careful in the future, the very opposite is occurred. They say, well, we did it wrong the first time, but now we know all those errors. We won't do that again. Now we can do three, three uh, uh, eradications simultaneously. The amount of hubris involved, of conceit involved, of arrogance involved is mind-boggling. And um, that's what the book uh, deals with, and that's what I dealt with uh, in this discussion yesterday.
the problem, the attraction of eradication is that uh, it appeals to politicians and philanthropists because they feel they're going to get something for it. I give my money and I get eradication. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the end is glorious. It is I have contributed to the eradication forever of a disease. Building long-term structures is not glamorous. It's not at the end of a certain number of years you said, we're done, no more money is needed, no more support is needed. It's hard to get politicians. Politicians in America are willing to build new airplanes for the Air Force all the time, but not to pay for replacement parts. That's the glorious thing, we have a brand new fighter plane. Replacement parts, because they're wearing out, there's no glory in that. They can't get that done. You build a new dam, fabulous. Supporting that dam over time, not so. So unfortunately, that's human beings. Um, so th there's a lot of glory attached to, to eradication and not so much glory, though it's so much more important for that steady, long haul building and maintaining of structures. And I think that's, that's the basic problem that we have here. It's an easier sell for eradication and to have your name on a statue erected for it than it is for that, that, that uh, boring routine immunization system or the boring health system that protects people's lives. That's the problem.